Let's talk about life in Nazi Germany. The Nazis were determined to control people from as young as possible, and they used school and youth groups to achieve this. Boys had to attend cubs between six and ten, then young German boys from ten to fourteen, and then Hitler Youth from fourteen to eighteen. Girls had to attend young girls, then the League of German Girls, then Faith and Beauty. From 1936, membership was compulsory, although some tried to avoid it, and all other youth groups were banned. What about in schools? Teachers had to join the National Socialist Teachers League, didn't they? Yes, and they had to teach a curriculum that reflected Nazi ideas on biology and history, and stressed the importance of physical exercise. Girls focused on things like needlework, while boys prepared for military service. Higher education declined, but some specialist schools were established to train future leaders. I know that the Nazis wanted to reduce the number of women in work and increase the birth rate. That's right. They offered marriage loans to women who gave up their jobs and eased divorce laws so that couples not having children could separate easily. Medals were even awarded to women who had children, and such measures meant more women came to support the Nazis. So, do you think the Nazis were successful in their policies towards women? The birth rate did rise at first, but then declined. This wasn't helped by the Nazis' own racial policies and sterilization program. The Nazis didn't dare force women out of the workplace entirely. Yet, when war began, they were reluctant to mobilize them for the war effort, depriving the Nazis of a large potential workforce. How did the Nazis deal with the economy? Hitler created jobs through the extension of public work schemes and by placing orders with private firms. He freed up cheap labor by destroying the trade union movement, and companies were given subsidies for hiring more workers. By using conscription and not allowing agricultural workers to register as unemployed, he drastically reduced unemployment. Heilmar Schacht was made economics minister in 1934. What did he do? He implemented the new plan to reduce German imports, and the four-year plan aimed for autarky, which means self-sufficiency, and also prepared Germany for war. Göring was put in charge of this in 1936, with Albert Speer succeeding him in 1942. Unemployment fell from six million to one point six million by 1936, and Germany recovered from the depression very quickly. So these policies must have been successful. Sort of, you see, autarky was never achieved, and Germans, on average, remained worse off than they had been before the depression. Even rearmament wasn't properly managed until Speer took over. Did most Germans benefit from Nazi rule? A superficial answer might say that for those people who weren't in a persecuted minority, life did improve. But it's impossible to balance the loss of civil liberties. And the persecution of the minorities, with the benefits to some Germans. Also, if it's judged that the Nazi state was always going to lead to war, then by 1945, surely no one could argue that the Germans had benefited from Nazi rule. We hope you have enjoyed using Revise on the Move and wish you the best of luck in your exams.